<coughs> that gives me a minute to spare. yours. You're crazy horse and you get down. Who here? Hold on. Gotta look. It's a moo lick. He got a moo lick going on. Give me like I mean give me like a half second. Huh? know that too. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Good morning, everybody. Good to be gathered together back again in the house of God. Amen. At the best of our ability, anyway. And uh, we hope that you've had a blessed week. Uh, hope that you've had a good week in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Scripture said, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Um, included. He didn't say, let, let me rejoice. He said, let us rejoice. Right. And uh, he included us all in it. So let's, let's get into service today. Worship the Lord. I want to make just this quick announcement that next Sunday morning, we'll be back into our, our 
sanctuary. Amen. It's Father's Day weekend. Yes. I want you to just come on out. Let's have church. Let's uh, let's just get uh, as many as we can to come out and uh, have a good time with the Lord. God's going to bless. I believe he's going to. Amen. But until then, we're we'll having to do it this way. But um, but we're just going to believe God's going to just do what we can't do. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to gather together, God, in your house to worship your name. We're asking, God, that you speak to our hearts and speak to our lives today, God, that you minister to us. You know what we have need of. God, you said that you knew that before we would ever ask. And, God, you know what needs to be done in this service today. Ask God to speak to our hearts and speak to our lives. We commit everything to you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Sister Karen's going to lead us in some singing. So let's just get in and worship the Lord today. Amen. I'm satisfied.
to that city to meet our Heavenly Father. And, and you know, that day may be here sooner than we really think. We hear it all of our lives, I know. But each day is a closer, closer step. So, you know, now is the time to get ready to go meet Him. thankful for the cross today yes. where would we be without the cross right. we would be miserable amen without hope but thank God for the cross thank God for what he done on the cross amen hallelujah going to come to you today for your your giving giving you an opportunity for you to give you don't have to have a certain time to give matter of fact people give at all hours of time yeah. and um uh, sometimes we can be laying in bed about 10:30 at night. We'll hear the cash app go off, and people are giving. So, but this is kind of we're just trying to keep our service, our our, our service uh, here, and what we normally would do. And so, we're going to take this opportunity for you to give. If you're going to give to the cash app, uh, it's it's Abundant Life Give, capital A, Abundant Life Give, and uh, we appreciate you for your giving. Amen. And uh, there used to be an old song that we would sing, you can't outgive the Lord right. no matter what you do. Right. You'll find out in the end that he's outgiving you. 
your silver and your gold and all your service to you can't outgive the Lord no matter what you do. So we want you to give as given to the kingdom, and God will bless you for it. Father, we come to you today thanking you for the opportunity to give back to you. God, we thank you, God, that, that you've, you've given us the, the finances, God. You've given us work, that we were able to work and provide for our family. And then, God, you teach us in your word what is required. God, for us to do. And, God, you, we want to bring back to you, God, what is expected and even beyond. God, because we know our blessings come to beyond, God, that of our tithe. And, God, we thank you for it. Now, bless the gift and the giver alike. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm a tool for the task of the master. just tools for the master's use right. amen i've got all kind of tools yeah. and each one is is used for a different purpose right. amen for different things that i need to do uh it takes a certain tool amen to bring it to pass and that's the way the body of christ is amen we're we're all designed for a different purpose and and it takes us all to bring forth the the job, to get the job complete, amen, and uh, working together for the kingdom. We'll come through for some worship today. We want you to worship the Lord, amen, as Sister Christy leads us in some worship. There in your home, wherever you are, just get your mind on God, and let's just worship Him together today, amen. Do what only you can do With one word the mountains move And when you free the dead arise And the bones come back to life There is power in this room Do it all One where the mountains move, and when you breathe, the dead arise, 
the bones come back to life. There is power in this room. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Like a river. Tears down walls, amen. And every enemy will fall. So we will stand and we will fight. Spirit, if we'll tap into the Spirit, if we'll worship 
when we're feeling overwhelmed. If we'll get into the word when we're feeling overwhelmed, the bondage of fear will leave because there is freedom where the spirit of the Lord is. So I don't know who that is for this morning, whether it's for, I know it's for me, but if it's for somebody else, where you're at, I don't care if you usually feel uncomfortable doing it, you just reach out and you worship. Worship breaks the fear. Worship has you meet where the Savior is and there will be freedom there. He will meet you there. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. And where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's complete freedom. Like a river running wild. Like a never ending fire Where the Spirit of the Lord is One more time, sing it where you're at Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is life Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom Like a river running wild Like a never ending fire the Spirit of the Lord is. Amen.
your promise still stands lord great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands lord this is my confidence you never failed me that's true. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. I'm still in your hands. For this. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Your promise still stands. For this is your faithfulness. back there y'all y'all can't see me but I'm, I'm back there just pacing the floor and praising the Lord and 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 God reminded me of the scripture uh, of Elijah when he was got word that his that his head was wanting Jezebel put out the word that he wanted uh, uh, Elijah's head and he he found himself under a tree and uh, he would sleep and and just just overtaken by fear at this time and and the scripture says that all of a sudden and I may get these 
uh, not in the, in the right place, but all of a sudden there was an earthquake that shook the earth or shook the ground violently and that there was a wind that came and it, it blew so hard that it would break the mountain and that there was a fire, a great fire that took place. But the scripture says that there wasn't, that, that, that God wasn't in any of those things. But the one thing that he was in was a still small voice that spoke to Elijah in this depressed in this time of depression, in this time of fear. And that, even though there was an angel that came twice to came and nourish him and, and try to get, encourage him and get him back to health, to get back on the road and, and back at the, uh, at the task that God had for him, it took a small, still voice from the presence of God, hallelujah, that would wake him up out of fear, that would wake him up out of that sp- uh, place of depression, that would get him back on his feet and, and moving forward, hallelujah, in the boldness of God, hallelujah, preaching the gospel. And I'm here to tell you, when the when God's presence shows up, things begin to take place. Uh, but some of you might need to hear a still, small voice that will wake you up out of fear, wake you up out of depression, uh, wake you up out of sorrow, wake you up, hallelujah, and get you back on your feet uh, to keep moving forward for the the kingdom of God so that people may know who he is and what Jesus did for them on the cross. Hallelujah. I, I, I appreciate Sister Christie and Brother Eric and Brother Brayson up here uh, uh, leading us into worship. I hope that you were receiving something out of that just as much as I was. And I, I, I want to say this before I get too ahead of myself and get too far in the scripture. I want to thank uh, um, I want to say that uh, we miss Brother Tony. I, I didn't get to talk to him, uh, but we miss Brother Tony. And uh, I'm, I'm back there trying to get the thing going. And I finally got, got it going and was able to just break away and worship. And, and I'll tell you what I think, Pastor, I think that what Brother Tony does back there is his is a type of worship. Him working and doing that. Uh, uh and and making that work he does such a good job at it and and we want to say we miss him just so thankful for everybody who works in this and and does uh, uh does what they do here for the kingdom of god and i want to say we miss y'all so very much so very much and i know pastor already said that and and we we'll just want to say for my my own self i want to say we love y'all and miss y'all so much i'm excited this morning um, I believe I have a, a word this morning um, that that I want uh, that I I want to try and I want to slow down and just talk about it. Um, and y'all know that I'm not very good at doing that, so y'all just bear with me. Uh, but I w- I want to go to um, the book of First John, chapter two, verses one and two. 1 John 2, 1 and 2. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 1 John chapter 2, 1 and 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. I want you to notice that because he's going to say something right after this that I I believe people take out of context sometimes. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And then he uses the word and. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with God. The Father. I want you to notice that as well. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. So who's the advocate with our Father? It shows us right there. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, 
but also for the sins of the whole world. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for your word. God, it is the bread to our soul. It is the bread for our spirit. God, I just pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would open up our ears, open up our understanding, open up our heart, God. God, that as the word is going forth, not from my words, but your words, God, would fill our soul, fill our heart, God, God, and, and, and provoke us, Lord, to move forward in the kingdom of God, move forward from where we were, Lord, and to growth in you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to first uh, note that the word used in uh, verse 1, it says we have an advocate. Well, Y'all are a whole lot smarter than I am. So I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to look up the word advocate. And and, and Sister Christie was preaching to me on the way home last night uh, from the church. And he, she was explaining to me uh, this advocate and what it really meant. And and uh, um, But I looked up in the Webster Dictionary what it, uh, what it means. And it gave me three different meanings. One of them says... One who pleads the cause of another. Specifically, one who pleads the cause of another before a judicial court. Number two says one who defends or maintains a cause or proposal. Number three is one who supports or promotes the interest of a cause or group. Advocate. This is, this is what the Bible tells us right here in, in 1 John chapter 2, 1 and 2. He says that if we, uh, or if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Somebody say amen there. Type amen or whatever on Facebook if you are glad to know that you have an advocate with the Father. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know hallelujah that I have an advocate with the Father. I'm glad to know I'm not going in this alone. I'm not doing this by myself, but I got somebody, hallelujah, who's fighting there for me. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to know that I've got an advocate. I told you I couldn't just teach this. Hallelujah. I get excited. But the, the scripture says that we have an advocate with the Father. Now, I want to clear something up because I have also read this and understood this scripture wrong at, at, at one time. But the Bible, the scripture says here that he said, these things write I unto you that you sin not. What is he writing unto us? Well, if you'll read the rest of that chapter, he is talking about how if we'll read the word and if we'll meditate upon the word of God, that, that it will keep us from sin. We've got, but we can't stay away from sin unless we first, the way I take from this chapter is we can't stay away from sin and unless we are pursuing the word of God and a relationship with the Holy Spirit uh, 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 that will keep us away from the desires of the flesh. Does that, does that make sense? Amen. Top amen if you understand what I'm saying. I, 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 the scripture was telling us right here, John is telling us right here that, that he's writing out this scripture. He's writing out this, this letter so that it would help believers stay from sin or or stay away from sin but then he adds he doesn't say i want you to notice he uses the word and he doesn't use the word but you say, well, Brother Dwayne, what's the difference there? If he used the word but, that would give you an excuse to sin. Amen? But he didn't use the word but. He used the word and. So he's implying that you don't need to sin. You don't need to even have an excuse to sin. You, you should want to pull and, and run away from sin with everything in you and with the help of the Holy Ghost and with the help and, and, and the, the uh, uh, 
learning and teaching of the word of God that should drive you away from sin and into the body of Christ and into the image of Christ and into a greater relationship with Christ amen so, so he's saying, I, I write all these things so that you don't sin, to direct you and teach you and lead you and guide you. And I'm so glad that God said, this is an inspired word that I have created through the work of the Holy Spirit that you would not sin. Amen? How many of you know that the word is the divine word of God, inspired by God? Amen? So if, if it's in his book, God is saying through his word to his believers, to his children, these things are in this word for a reason. Oh, come on now. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. He said I, the, these words are in here for a reason, so that you would not sin. And if any man, not just you, if any man sin, this phrase right here when it says if any man, it is actually talking about believers. It's not talking about the sinners of the world. It's talking about believers. If any man, if any believer messes up and gives in to sin, we have an advocate with a father. But let me make it straight. Go and sin no more. That is the mindset of God. That is the will of God. That is the heart of God is go and sin no more. Hallelujah. I want to make sure that I stress that. But it goes on to say that if any man sin, we have an advocate. Ooh. Praise the Lord Jesus. I, 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 I want to just tell you this. I was getting excited when I was putting this down uh, because, Pastor, I don't know about you, but when you start talking about Jesus, hallelujah, it's hard not to get excited. When you start talking about what, who Jesus is and what he means for the believer, hallelujah, what he done for us, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, it brings a whole new meaning and it, it opens up more understanding of who Jesus is. I want to read this scripture again, but I want to read it in the Amplified because it just it just broadens it a little bit more, makes it a little more, uh, has a few more things that it adds in here. It says, my little children, believers, dear ones, that's who he's talking to. I am writing you these things so that you will not sin and violate God's law. So he just, the Amplifier just really just opens it up to help you understand. He's talking about not only sin, but he's talking about that you uh, uh, fall away from God's law. You fall away from the word of God. Amen. He's saying if you, it, 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 he, he's writing these things things so that you will not fall away from the law, from God's law, from God's word. Amen. And he says, uh, uh, and if anyone sins, we have an advocate who will intercede for us. Praise the Lord with the father. I want you to notice he says with the father who is with the father advocating Jesus Christ, the righteous, the upright, the just one who conforms to the Father's will in every way, purpose, thought, and action. And he, that, uh, that same Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, the atoning sacrifice that holds back the wrath of God that would otherwise be directed at us because of our sinful nature or worldliness or lifestyle. And not for ours alone, but get this, but also for the sins of all believers throughout the whole world. Now let me tell you, let me tell you something. When the new, in the King James it says uh, that, that he not only is the propitiation for our sins uh, and not for ours alone but also for the sins of the whole world uh, now some people would take that scripture and say uh, well I, I can just live the way I want because Jesus paid it all on the cross uh, he, 
he died on the cross for my sins uh, so I'm already covered because of what Jesus did now there's there's a bit of truth in that yes you are covered uh, but there has to in this scripture he makes it clear you have to have a point where you come away from sin amen Pastor, I'm not done a very good job at not getting too excited on this. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to slow down. I'm trying to, trying to get into this. But there's been so many people and even so many churches and religions that believe that they can live their life the way that they want to live it. That is not pleasing unto God. And expect the advocate who is with the Father to intercede for them. The Bible says, or Paul rather says, and, and I didn't put it down in my notes. But he says in the scripture, he basically says, as I summarize, he says, if you are to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and then continue to sin, is Christ really your advocate or a promoter of sin? Certainly not. There is no purpose. There, there, there is no, no, uh, 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 there's no way that Christ decided to give his life so that, and give everything he had for you to continue and have the mindset that you can continue in sin. That is not the will of God. That is not uh, a court. That is that does not follow the word of God. And so if we're doing what Scripture says, uh, I write these things so you do not sin. This is the only way that the advocate will intercede for you is if you do not sin. Hallelujah. And if you do, you see there is a point in this Scripture that shows us that there must be a pursuit. There must be a fight. There must be a, 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 a race. There must, over and over in Scripture we find Paul would teach us that there's a battle between the flesh and the spirit. There, there must be a battle, hear me. There must be a fight. There must be a, a drive inside of you when you come to Christ. There must be a drive inside of you that says, I can no longer do those things. Those things I must put aside. And follow Christ, knowing in the back of my mind, if I do sin, I have an advocate with the Father. Now, I want to, I want to move on. Now, I want to, you to notice that the Scripture said, and I've said this a few times, notice that he says, advocate with the Father. Who is with the Father? Jesus Christ. Why is Jesus with the Father? Because he's our advocate with the Father. Now, I want to read John chapter 16 verse 7 says this. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper. Who's the helper? The Holy Spirit. Uh, the King James calls him the comforter. Hallelujah. He's the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said if I do not go away way then the Holy Ghost will not come to you but if I go guess what I will send him unto you hallelujah the amplified goes out and says something even so much more he says if I do not go away I can uh, uh, if I do not go away the helper or other known as comforter or he uses this word Advocate, hallelujah. Advocate or intercessor, counselor, strengthener, or, or, or standby will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit to you to be in close fellowship with you. Now let me tell you something. It's, it's very important. So much important that Jesus mentioned leaving so that he could leave, uh, send the Holy Spirit four or five or more different times. But this time in Scripture, he said, Verily, I tell you the truth. 
Why would Jesus, the son of the living God, that nothing that proceeds from his mouth is a lie, it's impossible, he's incapable of lying, would Jesus need to say, uh, I tell you the truth, uh, it's important that I go. Not that he was lying the other times, uh, but rather that he was stressing the major importance uh, that Jesus not stay here, uh, that he die on the cross uh, so that the helper hallelujah somebody say amen to that that the Holy Spirit may come Jesus is trying to emphasize the intensity of the importance that he leave so he may send the Holy Spirit now I want, I want to uh, the, the word the Greek word used here for comforter which the King James uses is parakletos, which means advocate. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Advocate. So if we wanted to, we could read this, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the advocate, come on now, will not come to you, but if I go, I will send the advocate to you. I want you to notice something. We see in, in, in the King James Version, in 1 John, we see that he says that Jesus is our advocate, but he mentions something. He says he's our advocate who is with the Father. But in John chapter 16, it shows us that the Holy Ghost is our advocate who is with us. Praise the Lord. Maybe this is just for me, amen. But, 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 but I'm glad to know that not only do I have an advocate or an intercessor who will stand in heaven interceding for me, but I also, hallelujah, have an advocate who is not afar off, but is right here with me day to day, walking with me, interceding for me uh, right here on earth as we speak Jesus would say this he said to the disciples when they were sorrowful because they knew he was leaving he said do not be sorrowful for I will go with you even to the ends of earth how would Jesus being in flesh be able to go even to the ends of the earth I'll tell you how because he said I gotta go so I can send my spirit oh hallelujah thank you Jesus I'm so glad to know he didn't leave us alone hallelujah but he said it's important it's in, to the extreme importance uh, that I go that I can send your advocate on here on, on earth with you amen so Jesus is the advocate with the father who pleads the payment of his blood over us against the wrath of God because of sin. And the Holy Ghost is the advocate with us who pleads the fulfillment of the promise in sanctification from sin. Amen. Did you get that? Jesus is the advocate with the Father who pleads the payment of his blood over us against the wrath of God because of sin. And the Holy Ghost is the advocate with us who pleads the fulfillment of the promise in sanctification from sin. Praise the Lord. John chapter 16, 12 through 15. I, if, I can, if there's anything that I can do this morning, I want to stress how important the Holy Ghost is in your life. It's so good to know, hallelujah, that you have an advocate with the Father. But you need, hallelujah, an advocate with you. Come on now. You need the Holy Spirit to walk with you and commune with you and have devotion with you. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. 
He said in John chapter 16, 12, and 15, Jesus said this, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now. But when he, hallelujah, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, God's spirit comes, he will guide you or prepare you or make you, hallelujah, into all truth, hallelujah, full and complete truth. For he will not speak of his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son, and he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. He will glorify and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it or give it, hallelujah, to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Because of this, I said that the, He, the Spirit, will take from what is mine and will reveal it to you. Mark chapter 16, 15 through 18 says, And He said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. Notice that. He that is believeth and is baptized, shall be saved. Now, I don't believe this word baptized is talking about water baptism. Amen. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but he who comes after me will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. The scripture here is talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He says, he that believeth and is baptized into the Holy Ghost shall be, and I love the fact, Pastor, he uses the word shall. Hallelujah, because that tells me it is not an instant process. It is a process of sanctification which we get from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. From the Holy Ghost. Why do I need the Holy Ghost? It's to bring you, hallelujah, to a sanctification process. Oh, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm here to tell you, Scripture says, believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and then these signs shall follow them that are believe. It uses just the word believe, but these signs will uh, will 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 follow those more than just believers. All right, I'm, I want to stress this. It does say that these signs will follow those that believe. Now there are people that will go out and they will cause the demons uh, to flee. They will uh, lay their hands on people and they shall recover. Uh, they will 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 see people get saved in the name of Jesus Christ and they will face Jesus one day and he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. That's why it's very important that you believe and uh, have a relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you must believe and be baptized, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, he that, uh, uh, though this, these signs will shall follow them that believe in my name. Now, that's the key. That's why things have to obey is because it's under the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, creation began. At the name of Jesus, the world became into existence. At the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. At the name of Jesus, chains and bondages will fall to the floor because there's power, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. He said, at my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Christ's work on earth was done, hear me now, at the cross. You say, I know that, brother. He legally bought us back with his blood. If he would have stayed, his work for us with the Father would not have been fulfilled. Amen? 
He could have went to the cross, and we all know on the third day he rose from the grave. If he would have stayed on earth, his work with the Father would not have been fulfilled. Just as Moses, the uh, uh, just uh, just as Moses petitioned God to spare the Israelites, Jesus petitions God to spare all of those who come to Him. This. He continues to do to this day. Amen. Jesus is our advocate with the Father. Now the Holy Ghost could not fulfill his work with us while Jesus was still on earth. Now I want to say this. This has rattled my brain. And I feel like the Holy Ghost has shown me that that which I didn't quite understand if you go into the Old Testament, you can see a, a, a plenty of places in the Old Testament that shows us that the Holy Spirit was just as much used or just as much available or just as much seen in the Old Testament as He was in the New Testament. There is a difference, don't get me wrong, but you can see uh, that throughout Scripture, for example, uh, when, when God told Moses, uh, I want you to get Aaron and, and, and Joshua and 70 of the elders and I want you to meet me uh, at Mount Sinai. The, by the, the Scripture tells us that they go to the side of Mount Sinai and it, it shows you the Trinity. You hear the, uh, uh, God's voice tell and command Moses, then all of a sudden the Bible says and God ate and supped with them we know who that is that's Jesus Jesus is God in flesh so Jesus shows up on the side of a mountain and, 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 and supps with them and, and ministers to them but then it says and God took from himself his spirit and filled the 70 elders and they began to prophesy don't you dare tell me that that was not the Holy Ghost come on now that was the work of the Holy Spirit God's spirit hallelujah that was upon those elders Ezekiel notes this uh, that that God was speaking to him uh, and he said uh, and I will take my spirit and put him inside of you so that you will keep my statutes uh, and will follow after me uh, I'm summarizing I'm, I'm, I'm speaking my own term there uh, but you look it up in Ezekiel uh, but 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 God was telling Ezekiel, you can't live according to my law. You can't live according to my statutes unless you have a part of me living inside of you. So I'm going to take my spirit, which is called the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to put him inside of you so you can live up to the standard. Okay, if that's the case, then what makes that any different from the New Testament? Why did Jesus say it's expedient? It's very important. I tell you the truth. I've got to leave so I can send the helper. Why, why Jesus? I don't understand. He's already been here. Come on now. I'm asking questions that I asked. Looking up in words, I know you probably have the same questions. Why, God, I don't understand why the Holy Spirit, why Jesus had to leave for the Holy Spirit. He's always been here. Because the Holy Spirit, Jesus was already here. There was no need of the Holy Spirit when Jesus, the other Godhead, is already, well, let me say it like this. There was no need for him to work through us with Christ doing the work for us. Did you hear me? There is no need of the Holy Ghost to be here that will work through us with Christ being here doing the work for us. That's why Jesus, oh, hallelujah. That's why Jesus said it's expedient that I go because it's not my purpose. It's not my will that I do all this for you. 
Somebody say praise the Lord. He said, I got to go so I can send the other interceder, so that I can send the Holy Spirit, so he can work through you, hallelujah, and be able to do all these things. And we see that I read in just a few, uh, um, those other chapters and books of Mark and John, that all the things that we get because of the Holy Spirit being with us, uh, we get all these magnificent things, hallelujah, but that's not what it's all about. Oh, Jesus taught us. He taught us, and I knew he was looking into the future. He said, go out and, and, and do the work of the Lord. And they went out, and they, and, and they come back, and they said, Oh, Lord, even the demons are subjected to, uh, to, our, uh, to our word, and they have to do what, they, what we tell them to do. And the people are getting healed. And, and Jesus said, Don't marvel on these things, but marvel upon the fact that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life he's saying in preparing the people he's saying there, there's coming a time where I'm not going to he said Why, how long must I stay with you uh, he was saying how long do I have to do it for you uh, he said I got to leave so the Holy Spirit can come and fulfill his purpose uh, through to work through you amen Praise the Lord. If you got what I'm saying, lift, put some hands lifted on the comments or say amen. Once the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost came, he began to do that which Jesus said he would do. Leading and helping us spread the good news throughout the world by the work of healings, tongues, casting out demons and boldness to speak the truth. Listen, that is why we have the gifts today. Now, now, now don't get me wrong. I, I'm not preaching on a, a message of tongues because tongues is a message of itself. But because the, we have all these spiritual gifts so that we can edify the church so that we can build the church so that we can go and do what Jesus commanded us to do. He said, go and make disciples. How do you make disciples? You convince them that Jesus Christ is the Lord. How do you convince them? By using the gifts that the Spirit will give you. By the laying of hands and they shall recover. By the casting out demons. By the speaking in unknown tongue or speaking in a language that they know but you didn't learn but the Holy Spirit gave you the utterance to speak so that you could give them the mysteries of the gospel and the good news. He gave us all these gifts to work for the kingdom of God so that the Holy Ghost could work through us. But it's so much, but the Holy Ghost being here is so much more than just those gifts. Bless, praise the Lord, bless the Lord for the gifts. But the Holy Ghost's purpose and work was one to work through us and to work in us. You see, the more important work. Why Jesus said, I got to go so I can send the comforter. He'll work through you. But this is why, this is the important part. Is that the work of the Holy Ghost is to sanctify us. And bring us into holiness. Man, why do I need the Holy Ghost in my life? Because you can't be sanctified unless you have him. Why do I need the Holy Ghost in my life? Because you can't come out of your flesh and away from your flesh without him. Why do I need the Holy Ghost? Because you can't even come into holiness, that which God has called us to be, without him. 1 Peter chapter 1 and 2 says, According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit to the obedient to Jesus Christ, and to be sprinkled with his blood. See, we can't even be obedient without the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Come on now. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13 says, But we should, be, we should and are morally obligated as debtors always to give thanks to God for you, believers beloved by the Lord, 
because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. He is talking about the Holy Ghost right there. Spirit capitalized. That sets you apart for God's purpose. And by your faith in the truth. Scripture is clear that we must first have faith to believe in God. And, ha and accept salvation through Christ and what he did on the cross. But then we must add to our faith the Holy Ghost. That he may bring us through the sanctifying process. And let me say this. You may have looked at yourself and say, I don't understand why I can't get away from those things. You need to check your relationship with the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Let me be real for just a moment. There is too many people that are teaching and saying that, the, 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 this, that it, all it is is faith. Faith alone. Believing in Jesus Christ and I'm, go I'm going to be in heaven. But the Bible is clear that we must have faith and add to it the Holy Ghost. So that it, He can pull us, that He can make us, that He can form us out of flesh and in the Spirit. See, Paul understood this. Paul said, I, that's why I walk in the Spirit. Because I know that the more I walk in the spirit, I will not do the desires of the flesh. Amen. There are two kinds of sanctification. First, positional sanctification means set apart for God. And in some instances, set apart for God's purpose. Second, is practical sanctification is a progressive process and means growing in righteous living. This is dependent on a person's reliance on the Holy Ghost. I want to end with this this morning. If you want to close your eyes, close your eyes. But I, I want you to do this with me. This is something that I felt the Holy Spirit give me at 2 o'clock in the morning. Picture this. On judgment day in heaven. You're standing there waiting to be judged. God is sitting before you and he opens the books. What's going, what is going through your mind at this moment? As you're standing here and you're looking up at God and he's opening up the books. What is going through your mind? Think about it. You swallow hard and you turn your head to notice Jesus and the Holy Ghost standing beside you prepared to intercede for you. This is how it's going to go. You'll hear Jesus began bringing before God your case of salvation. The payment was made. You are legally sealed by faith through, uh, through his sacrifice and shedding of blood. The contract is signed with your name written in the book of life. Praise the Lord, you shout. Thank you, Jesus, you say with more meaning than ever before. And as Jesus finishes, all of a sudden the Holy Ghost begins to bring for, before God your case uh, of justification. Uh, and one by one, the Holy Ghost explains uh, how yours and his relationship grew uh, because from the moment after salvation, you seeked after him by continual practice uh, and devotion in the word of God. Uh, how sick. Excuse me, seconds turned into minutes. Uh, minutes turned into hours. Uh, hours turned into fasting days and prayer uh, and communion with him. Uh, he would tell God, because of your walking with him uh, and desiring him, uh, you would deny yourself more and more every day. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm glad to know I got two, hallelujah, standing in my corner who's not preparing but is prepared 
prepared and ready to intercede for me. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you something. It's good that we have two advocates. Uh, one who is with the Father, who's pleading the blood uh, that was spilled on Calvary. Uh, one who's standing there saying, uh, you give them a chance, God. Uh, hold back your wrath against sin. Uh, for I died for a reason uh, that the payment would be sealed uh, and that their name would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All the while we have God walking with us in the cool of the day uh, as the Holy Ghost uh, sanctifies us in our day-to-day -day life, interceding for us. I, I believe with everything in me. You say, how do you know what's going to happen in, in judgment day and how do you know what's going to happen in heaven brother and sister no eye has seen no ear has heard I don't know but what my scripture and what my bible tells me is not only do I have an advocate who is interceding for me with the father but he does not leave me alone. He goes with me even to the ends of the earth with the Holy Ghost who walks with me and teaches me and leads me into all truth and gives me the power to do the things that, that, that the will of God would have me do to spread the gospel throughout the, the world so that more people can come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and have a, a relationship and fellowship with the presence of God, the Holy Ghost, uh, that, we, that the Holy Ghost will bring them into a sanctifying process that will pull them away from flesh uh, and away from the desires of this world uh, into a holiness. Amen. Scripture tells us this. It's our reasonable service. Reasonable service. To go through this sanctifying, to be a living sacrifice. That means go through a sanctifying process. Crucify the flesh. Kill the flesh. Amen. He said that we would do these things so that it would bring us to a perfect will of God. You cannot be prepared unless you invite the Holy Ghost in your life. That's why it's so important. Yes, I believe that all who call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. But even then it says shall. There's, there's a saving process. There's a sanctifying process that brings you out of your fleshly mindset. You need a renewing of the mind. How do you get that? By the Holy Ghost leading you into all truth. Let me pray with you. Holy God, Father God, I love you and I thank you so much. Holy Ghost, I pray right now that you would just take this word and that you would just, you would write it upon the heart of man. Write it upon every heart of the church of abundant life. Our friends and our family. Lord, that this word will provoke us and cause us to move from where we're at in growth and fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that you bring us to new understanding. You bring us to a new anointing. You bring us to a new level of fellowship and relationship with the Holy Ghost, Lord. God, that as we look back we can honestly say, who is that person? When we look back at ourselves, we can say, who is that? That's what I used to be, but, 
But because of the saving grace that Jesus did on the cross and the bloodshed and the sealing of the contract, the, the legal payment that was made for me and the fellowship with the Holy Ghost, I am can honestly say I am not that person no more. Lord, I pray right now if 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 people that are watching, if they've not accepted and allowed the Holy Spirit to come into their life, I pray at this time, give them a heart of flesh, Lord, and let them invite the Holy Spirit in. God, that he will bring them through justification and holiness to look more and more like you and grow in you. All for a day that we'll get to be face to face with you one day, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray thank you for your word. Thank you for your message. We praise and give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I did the best that I could to to do this calmly and 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 uh teach this, but as you can see, I'm called to be a preacher, not a teacher. <laughs> but I'm so glad that y'all have got on here and um have have you know, just really watched us and followed us even through these trying times. I understand as pastor has already already said, it's different. It's different, and we would rather all be together. But, hey, guess what? Pastor's already said we're going to be together again next Sunday, Father Day Sunday, and, and we're going to come and, and fellowship and, um, and and lift up and honor our Heavenly Father on Father's Day and, and 